Hi, this is Mike Henriksen from Strata Data in New York. I'm here with Ashish from Deloitte. Ashish, how are you doing? Very well, thank you. So we spoke two years ago, yep. and we spoke mostly about AI and cognitive at that time. Mm -hmm. What's changed in two years? Because I think, you know, that's a long time in technology. It certainly is. And in, in, in fact, the last time we spoke about one of the things that I was talking about is, you know, how some of this needs to be mainstream and uh, how it has become mainstream is the real story. And uh, most people, you know, read about self-driving autonomous cars. And that's the biggest experiment in AI, if you ask me, right? So uh, a car, a self-driving car, pretty much is, you know, gathering all of this data and it's making all these decisions with uh, relative to a traffic light, relative to starting and stopping, relative to weather conditions, rain, water, whatever it may be. And you'll see what they're doing this is, they're doing this with, you know, several components of next generation technologies, right? LiDAR, for example, right? It's the next generation of radar, which gives you 3D maps that helps you navigate data and be able to understand the difference between different kinds of objects, right? So if you ask me, um, and we saw this with GM's, you know, one point some billion dollar investment in, in, uh, in uh, AV technology that they bought, you'll see that these kinds of things are beginning to attract money from VCs, mm -hmm. money from OEMs, and that sort of is, is the real part of it, right? So if you look at AI, and if you look at the manifestation of AI, especially in sectors like automotive, you know, med tech device manufacturers, this, it is real, it's very real. Um, and last time I was giving an example of somebody that was, you know, doing uh, insertable Bluetooth is going to bring it to market from the standpoint of, you know, proactive disease monitoring, right? So this is, now we are seeing, you know, these things start to happen in the real world. It's no longer an experiment. So the real world, because you guys actually work with companies. I mean, this is not research. This is actual practical in the trenches. We're doing building systems for companies. That's correct. And... There are kinds of two things going on, I think, in the world. There's transformation and there's disruption. Mm -hmm. And the transformers want to not be disrupted. They want to get there and keep their market share. And the disruptors want to take that market and own it themselves. So can you give us some examples of the types of in-the-trenches practical stuff that different industries are doing? Because I know you guys have worked with oil companies all the way through finance, everything. Mm -hmm. Can you give us any examples of really good use of AI and cognitive now? I, I will, and um, you know, I t spoke about AIs and cars, so OEM, so that's a Nissan, a BMW, Mercedes-Benz Daimler, are very entrenched into building autonomous cars, and, and we're part of that journey with, with the Fords, the GMs, the BMWs of the world. Um, and if you look at the cognitive side, right? We think of our cognitive as actually three things, right? We talk about robotic and process automation, which is attracting very, very big news from the standpoint of what it's going to do to transform most people's organization and workforces. Think of that as a kind of cognitive, which is transforming how we do work. And it's built around the theme or concept of if you're going to do something repeatable, mm -hmm. whether it's a business process or something that's rules defined, can you automate it? That's sort of one tranche of cognitive. If you think about a second tranche of cognitive, it is around how do you enable decision making with the purview to algorithms, right? This is where you see real world evidence and disease management and the things that Watson Health is talking about. You know, how do you curate um, a doctor's, you know, pathway to treatment with things that can scan journals and, and all the other things that are happening at breakneck speed? That's another kind of cognitive. Um, and the final kind of cognitive is intelligent agents, right, which we think of as cognitive insights, right? The best example is Amazon Echo. An intelligent agent that can filter, you know, the background noise from your voice commands to be able to order for you, to be able to tell weather for you, to be able to play music for you. Um, and these are sort of the, these are the tranches of what we deal with. So if you look at any process intensive industry, whether it's banking or, or any aspect of it, they focus on the first bucket mainly. You know, how do I get repeatable processes built through bots and get to efficiencies of scale relative to workforce performance? Um, the second tranche is very oriented towards industries that are R&D focused, medicine, so on and so forth. Um, and the third tranche pretty much is, is consumer centric. It's still consumer centric and not B2B. Now, the, <laughs> the real question to be asked is, does this transcend a B2C and echo as a technology? Or, or a voice command and, and get into the world of B2B. Um, 
we have certain hypotheses, it'll be a longer conversation, but I think it's coming. I think all three are coming. So in this field, are we now at the point of where we're not necessarily intelligently predicting the future and, and having AI do that for us, but we're kind of responding to a corpus of what it can learn and respond to? Are we going to get to that point to where AI is going to guide us more intelligently, like guide us as humans into a maybe a safer, better planet? I mean, <laughs> is, is there a point where we get to that point? We do. In fact, uh, there is currently a technology that's being tested. There was uh, a new segment around it where they basically are going to embed AI into the decision-making in the battlefield before you fire a weapon. Now, that's an example of, you know, when is a man, when is a human cognitive behavior being overcome by somebody that's giving you the, the data uh, or the next action to be taken in a battlefield scenario, right? This is a real-world example of, uh, you know, can we make things intelligent enough to take it to the battlefield where it pretty much determines, you know, what is the next action to be taken, um, I don't think we're very far away from you know those kinds of applicability of scenarios depending upon the sector that we're talking about. Now, how soon it happens, how fast it happens, how ready are we for it? Right, that's sort of the big the change management aspect of it right. is the biggest biggest component of whether we can or cannot do it, or would it be acceptable to us? Um, you know, in general, is is to be determined, but. It's coming. Excellent. So last time we spoke, too, we talked about big data being big data, and that was the, the rage at the time because ML and AI and all these new technologies were kind of on the forefront mm -hmm. or out in front of us a little bit. Is big data still really important, or it is, is it the application of it through AI and through um, assisted living and learning down the road? Is that, or is data still really important in here? Data is still really important. I mean, big data is still very, very big for us. And the reason why big data is still very big for us is, is for most people to do the higher levels of abstraction of AI, machine learning, cognitive, doesn't get into place until you start to assimilate this voluminous data where you can do these things. Um, so where what, we've, what has happened to our book of business is, is big data has become very, very transformative when we talk to organizations about their investments. So if you look at... Uh, core platform modernization. This is this is this is what how we sell big data in the marketplace. Uh, core platform modernization is roughly about you know two hundred million dollars in our portfolio, and the reason for it to be this sizable is primarily because most organizations have come to the conclusion that to do this at scale, they first need to get their data right, the the processing, the assimilation, mm -hmm. the storage, in a place where you can do ML and AI, the things that we're talking about. So most people now know for a fact that that's st sort of step one of the journey, right? And most people are doing step one of the journey at scale, knowing step two is within the purview of what needs to happen in the next 18 to 24 months. So I would say um, big data no longer is, is a theme from the standpoint of when we should do it, give me a roadmap and those things. It's like, this is step one, this is table stakes. So this needs to be in place for me to do the other things that most people are talking about. So how do I get out of my siloed, you know, legacy systems that are built in a purview of different relational databases and different ERP platforms and get it to a place where you can start to do these things with it, so, which is the reason why it's such a big portfolio of services for us. So let's, let's shorten our time period for the next time we talk. This was two years. <laughs> let's talk about if you and I sit down a year from now, what would you like to say Deloitte is doing with your partners in one year's time frame? With all the data and AI and ML that's going on, what would you like to be doing? I think, you know, if you ask me, right, the, the scope of services has become fairly, you know, describable in like, you know, I would say three words, digital, cloud, right? And to a certain extent, because it's digital and cloud, how is it enabled by the underpinnings of big data, right? So if you, if we sit down 12 months from now, I think there is going to be no big, large transformation program within the portfolio for services that does not touch one of the three, but all three. So what I will be able to come back and tell you in 12 months is, is any client that embarks, embarks on any of these journeys, there's a digital component to it, there's a cloud component mm -hmm. to it, and by the way, it's being built for what we've spoken about so far. So that would be our reality. Excellent. Ashish, we look forward to that conversation. Pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.